Hi everyone. Adrian here. Adrian here is going to tell us about rank. Hi everyone, so I'm going to present uh, with my colleague Andreas uh, Ring. So Ring is a fully distributed communication platform. Um, so it's, it's a f fully distributed communication platform using a few different distributed systems to work. And so we're going to present to you what Ring is, uh, how it works, and how we implemented those different dif distributed systems to uh, design Ring. Um, okay, sorry for the slides in French, but um, yeah, so this is basically the different kind of distributed system you can have. Uh, so the classic kind of uh, uh, inf uh, information system will be a, a centralized system. So we, you will have everything on a single server or uh, a single yeah, computer or, or node that will have all information from everybody and that will authenticate different users. That's, so that's the classic uh, form of different web services, um, proprietary services, but also many free software services are hosted on a single server or by a single organization. Uh, the federated system is what we use with emails. So with emails, we have different servers. Those servers can communicate be between each other and every user has a server is registered on a given server. So you send email to this server, the server will communicate with other servers, and then this other server will give the email to the, the other end user. And Ring is fully distributed, so uh, there's no uh, federation uh, concept. It's really fully peer-to-peer. -peer. So Ring is based on a certificate, certificate chain. So when you create a new Ring account, uh, you will basically generate a new RSA key pair. Um, so this is the base of identity management in Ring. So just as an interjection, uh, previously, previous versions of Ring, because uh, this is an, as a project that's been in development for quite some time, and uh, recently a major advancement has been the changing from uh, the representation of your user name as the public key. Uh, to a, a username that's bound to a public key now that's being stored uh, using blockchain and distributed across the DHT. So uh, I'll, in a minute I'll give a demonstration of like creation of a, of, a, of, a, of a ring account and your what we, what we call a ring ID is essentially your, your, your public key. And uh, this is now being represented by a username so much easier to use the software in terms of an end user experience. You can look up a, a name rather than trying to uh, paste your your long string of uh, characters into a, a paste bin or something like that, which is what we used to do. Uh, or we, we implemented originally a QR, QR code system, so that if you're using Android with a camera or some device with a camera, you could take a picture of the QR code and it would convert it to uh, uh, the ring ID. Uh, but so now, recently in the past year, uh, released just before the beginning of uh, uh, 2017, was the release of the Beta 2, which includes that functionality, and as well, another major advancement, which has been the ability to add multiple devices and to chain multiple devices into a master account. So, for people who you know, use you know uh, telecommunication systems on multiple devices, you can now use the same account on more than one device, which was uh, undoable before, uh, using you know the DHT as well. So, and keeping everything secure. Uh, I think I guess about uh, the the archive secure, um, and I'll do a demonstration of the. <laughs> so, so Andreas is going to show uh, on this laptop uh, when you create a new a new Ring account uh, how it goes. So we try to make Ring as easy as possible to use for end users. So our goal uh, is to make Ring just as easy as as to use as any other uh, proprietary, pr proprietary uh, communication software. Uh, so the absence of a central server should be as transparent as possible for the user. Uh, so the user shouldn't care about the existence or not of a central server as much as possible. 
except of course uh, power users who understand the implications of all this. Um, so as, as you can see, basically if you just generate a key, uh, a key pair, you will get uh, a, public, a public key that will be complex and you will not be able to remember that key, that public key to give to other people. So if you are um, at some club and you want to give to some girl your identity and ring, you will not be able to give uh, this long ID. It, it's not going to be possible. But you will, may, you might be able to give just a, 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 a username you registered. So oh, I'm I'm, uh, I'm Bob on ring, you know this kind of thing. Bob's taken, by the way. <laughs> oh, shit. So is LOL one through like 100 for testing purposes? Uh, so we implemented uh, username registration on the blockchain uh, to be able to register usernames with, without using any central server. So for this, we used uh, we chose the Ethereum technology uh, to have as much flexibility as possible uh, compared to other uh, blockchain-based uh, name registration systems. Uh, so we use uh, Ethereum. Uh, in a, in a complementary uh, complementary with the classic uh, DHT that we use to find other peers on Ring. Uh, so when you use your Ring ID to contact someone, it will use the DHT distributed system similar to BitTorrent, but fully encrypted to find other peers, exchange the IP address with the other peer, and then establish a peer-to-peer -peer TLS connection with the other peer that you found on the, <laughs> over the DHT. So now with Ethereum, you will first, if you know the, the, the name of the peer you want to contact, you will first do a lookup on the DHT. So it's a free instantaneous operation on the blockchain. And uh, you will get the ring ID <coughs> corresponding to this username and then use this ring ID just as you will you know, use an, an IP address that you resolve from a DNS address online. So the Ethereum registry is basically just a Name, ring ID, so it's key pairs uh, registry. It's very light, uh, but it's still not light enough to be on every single ring uh, device. So every single ring uh, node is a DHT node, participates, gives us the resources for other peers to uh, reach each other. But uh, the blockchain is too heavy, uh, the mining process is too heavy to run on every ring node. So uh, the ring name server is a separate project from a uh, ring. So when, when you install ring, you don't have a, you know, a, block, a blockchain node uh, mining or anything. But you can, anybody can just clone the source code of the ring name server and participate to the uh, existing <coughs> blockchain. Um, so how do, people, how do people find each other uh, on ring? They use the OpenDHT uh, network. OpenDHT Network is a distributed hash table that we created at Software Linux to meet the, the needs of Ring. So OpenDHT, uh, it's Academia-like hash uh, Who here knows what are distributed hash tables? Oh, okay, okay, good, good. <laughs> so OpenDHT, it's, a it's an implementation of a distributed hash table that allows to uh, store not just IP addresses like BitTorrent, but any kind of data, and we use it to store encrypted IP addresses, as I as explained. Uh, so when you reach people with ring, you will put your encrypted uh, IP address, and the other person will reply on the DHT. I will show you, but if you already know uh, distributed hash tables, this will, uh, you will mostly already know this algorithm. So this is the Kademlia algorithm. Every node knows some part of the network, the nodes that are the closest to the node own IP. Uh, ID, and you will then ask other nodes uh, iteratively. Uh, you will ask the closest node that you know uh, to the target ID until you reach uh, the target ID, and the node will answer you with the list of nodes that are the closest to the target ID. Uh, so that similar to the technology used by BitTorrent to find uh, peers. Yeah, so we use OpenDHT in combination, in combination with uh, 
the Ethereum blockchain-based uh, name registration. And uh, yeah, we use them to create a, a, a dis fully distributed uh, network. Uh, I think, do we have time? Do I do a demo of the account creation? We have 10 more minutes. Okay, we might do a, a demo. Uh, yeah, I'll, well, first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll just go through the account creation. It's pretty simple, but yeah, you obviously, people at the start of the implementation of this, uh, the Ethereum blockchain uh, name service, giving people the option to, to not do such a thing. Uh, so you don't really have to uh, register, but by default, it's the best idea. Uh, so I'll find something that, uh, create an account here. Oops. So, lost them. Test. So yeah, this would be a local name. I'll create a ring account. Uh, I'll register it. On. So now you can put that on the screen. Uh, so, I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah unfortunately. I'm just. I'm just. Yeah. I can, I mean, it's yeah. There's a, no HDMI cable. If you have a HDMI. But uh, essentially, I'm just writing in a couple of fields the, the name that I'm gonna, uh, gonna keep you locally and the name that I'm trying to register onto the blockchain. And uh, then I supply a password. I'll uh, keep it simple. So compared to the DHT used in BitTorrent, in Ring we uh, implemented a new feature that is uh, here called Listen. So you can ask other nodes to be informed of a change of value at some given hash. So when you will be called, uh, for an incoming call, for instance, you won't have to do some kind of pooling every second. You will be direct, you will receive a network packet from other nodes saying, oh, there's a new uh, value, and then you will see, oh, it's uh, someone trying to call me. Um, we try to reduce as much as possible the impact of uh, the DHT network on mobile devices, because the DHT network re re requires to keep track of other nodes online, send and receive packets, uh, uh, continuously, so it's pretty bad for the battery on mobile devices. But we are we have a lot of internet projects to uh, try to have like proxy nodes or this kind of things uh, to reduce the load on uh, mobile devices in terms of uh, battery and uh, data consumption. Do you have any questions about the distributed design? Do you need about uh using of uh, nodes, is that just a concept now or it's already implemented? Sorry? Uh, proxy node. Oh yeah, proxy node, so it's not implemented yet, but we think about it for a long time. Uh, to have uh, nodes registering themselves on the OpenDH networks, network itself. But being themselves on the, on the fixed internet and not on the mobile device. Yeah. yeah. So maybe like uh, the, the desktop version of Ring might, might enable by default uh, allowing to proxy other nodes, this kind of thing. Uh, another question. Uh, why is it necessary to, to use the Ethereum blockchain? Yeah, the reason is that on the DHT network, there is no way uh, to be sure that no one else will register the same name. Uh, you know, so there is no uh, cryptographic certainty that you will be the only person to have this name. <laughs> Okay, it's, it's, it's just it's just for for um, making sure that, that it's only that, that each and every username is only created once. Yeah, exactly. It's it's to preserve the the security of Ring because otherwise some other person could register a name. So when you are called and this this other person will will receive the call and they, then this other person can act as an attacker, as a man in the middle or anything. So you're using the blockchain as directory. Yeah, exactly. So, names are important, right? Do you do anything to check whether I should have access to the name? Is there anything to stop me registering as Software Fed Linux or real Donald Trump or Scarlett Johansson? Yeah, you can go to uh, google.com and register a new Google account with any name that is not currently yeah, they registered. Can, they can fix that because they, ha they have terms of license and terms of use. Yeah, so we design the blockchain so that it has a cost to register a name. Uh, when you uh, want to do, a, when you want to perform a transaction on the blockchain, there is a transaction cost, and there is also a cost that can be defined in the contract uh, that can be arbitrary. Uh, 
so um, we designed the thing so that it, it's it should cost you too much to register. Every name that you register in the blockchain has a cost to you. So if you want to register one million names, you will have to I do... Only want to, I only want three important ones. I want Slava Fred Linux, real Donald Trump and Scarlett Johansson. That's going to be fairly cheap. Yeah. So just to pick three, everyone is not going <laughs> yeah. to... Those are probably already taken. <laughs> okay, that's all right then. Yeah, it's... Trump-related stuff yeah, is very yeah, yeah. popular. <laughs> But uh, are you talking about the, the the fact that like somebody might be able to register a controversial name or something which really shouldn't belong to them and will be expected to belong because real names mean something? Right. Well, that's uh, uh, that's a question I don't really personally have an answer for that. I mean, because if I want to if I want to register myself as somebody else, yeah, I could do that on a lot of things. I guess you're saying that Google would prevent you from doing that, from registering yourself as the, the real name of somebody else? If they, if they didn't stop you, they have, I'm pretty sure, ways of fixing it, as do Twitter and Facebook. Okay. If people will <laughs> claim it back, because they have terms of service. It's a centralized server, so they can do that. Yeah. Right. They have the power to do that, but most, we most web services will allow you to register any name who you want. It's not the registering, it's the, it's the sorting it afterwards. As Changing. The person behind you points out, when it's centralized, it's much easier to fix. Well, the, the idea behind the name registration service is that the first person to register a, na a name will have this name on, on the service. But this could evolve in the future, but in, as of now, this is the... the in, in, in a case of complete c catastrophe, I guess the, the entire the, the blockchain can be annihilated and restarted, <laughs> uh, resulting in everybody losing their registered names and restarting their accounts, which would be, which would be horrible. But I haven't really encountered anything like or any situations that I would think. Absolutely. Well, I'll talk to you later on. But there is yeah, legal issues. Uh, it might be similar to the <laughs> there was issues with like the DAO on the blockchain. There was a, a bug in their code that allowed someone to steal a lot of money. But since it was written on the blockchain, nobody could do anything about it. So the community decided to move to another blockchain that fix this issue. So if there was a major issue with the name registration service, we might decide the whole ring community to move to some new directory that will have new rules to fix the issues that were uncultured in previous versions of the blockchain. And it could be very well done to import most of the names that were already there in the previous blockchain or this kind of thing. I mean, that, I guess that, that is a concern. There's other, there's other uh, issues that we're working on in the upcoming year and implementing, like being able to change your password, which is a, uh, a, a core feature that people need. So if you forget your password, people, people have mentioned this. And we have a few ideas for, for how to implement that, and it will probably come out in the next year. Yeah. Is it possible to implement <coughs> custom services over Ring? And is there a client version without a graphical interface? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes. So the Linux version has a D-Bus interface, so you can uh, control it with any sort of thing that has a D-Bus interface. We have Python scripts ourselves to make mm. automatic tests on, on that. Um, also, the yeah, mostly and the, the just the core ring can be built as a library, and you can link a, a, on it also. Intended for IoT purposes. There's, yeah. also, there's a middleware that's, that people use to uh, design clients. Uh, however, like Android does not use the middleware. Somebody built the client directly on top of the daemon. Uh, for instance, the version that, uh, that I've spent a lot of time developing, which is the U U uh, Universal Windows uh, version of the client, that also does not use the middleware, so we just developed it right on top of the, the daemon. So pretty much anybody could go about uh, making their own client interface uh, with the API. Okay, last question, short, because we are out of time. Uh, does it run over tour? <coughs> hmm? No. no. Okay. Over tour. Oh. No, because it's UDP based, and also it's a real time communication, and Tor is not very well suited for real time communications. Okay, thank you. Thank you.